Well, welcome to this LEX 18 Digital Conversation. I'm Dia Davidson. Are you a hunter? Do you love the great outdoors? If so, do you know the outdoor and hunting rules here in Kentucky? Well, today we're going to be talking with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources to get all the answers and even some tips on making your time outside safe and fun. So joining me now to talk about it all is Kevin Kelly. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This is exciting time for people who like to be out fishing and hunting here in Kentucky. So let's talk a little bit about doing it, doing it safely, and having some fun with it. Absolutely. All right. So this right now, what season is sort of the thing to be hunting for well, now? Well, we're coming up. November is a big kickoff for fall hunting seasons. Okay. Uh, and in in that month, you have the, kind of the biggest season for hunters is the modern gun deer season, and that opens November 11th this year. Okay. Um, so, but there are other opportunities out there as well. All right. So when you're saying modern gun, you're talking about rifles, rifles right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. But you yeah. brought today a bow and some arrows, and yes. that seems to be a big fad of, of, of uh, I guess, ways to kill. Wildlife, right? Yeah, and it's it's really actually it's popular in schools too. The the National Archery in the Schools program gets a lot of kids involved in archery. Really? Um, schools across the state, there are thousands and thousands of kids who are into this, and mm -hmm. and you know we hope that they transition into hunters right. uh, eventually. But uh, bow hunting is very popular across the state. The, and we saw a lot of it with uh, the movie Brave. Yes. Where she's there and she's, as a girl, doing it and doing it from horseback and all Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. It's a great activity. Indeed. Indeed. Well, let's talk a little bit about doing everything safely. We want folks to be safe. And mm -hmm. so the first thing, I guess, to do is to contact your uh, office for licensing? Well, licensing and also hunter education. Okay. Uh, you definitely want to look into hunter education. And, um, if you require a license, you're going to require a hunter education course. Um, so you can either do that online, uh, and we also hold classes across the state. What are some of the things that you teach? It's basically basics of, okay. of hunting. Okay. Um, and it covers the gamut of from bow hunting to uh, hunting with guns um, to game species mm -hmm. identification and safety. Safety is a big element of hunter education. Oh, sure, sure, because it's not only the weapons, but the great outdoors can be dangerous too. Absolutely, um, that's why hunter education is so great. And, and we have this, you know, this hunter orange in front of us. Right. Um, that's one way to keep you safe in the woods, especially during a gun season. Well, how do you know where to go and how to do it safely? Because you just don't want to be just kind of tromping off into the woods and sure. think that you're gonna. Sure. Come out with something. You definitely want to be mindful of what seasons are in at the moment if right. you're going to go out to a wildlife management area okay. or into the Daniel Boone National Forest. Um, that would be one thing. Um, but you also can check out our website to, and, our, uh, and our fall hunting guide, right. and that will kind of give you a road map to, you know, where can I go, what's close to me, that right. type of thing. And that's where I would start. And what game, I guess, you can actually Correct. take home with you. Yep. Okay, so once we, and you said th that uh, it is this bright, bright orange. So if mm -hmm. you see this in the woods, you know that that's a, that's, a human there's being. There's a hunter, yes. Okay, but you brought a beaver here mm -hmm. that has been skinned. And tanned, yes. and, and tanned. Are there a lot of places around Kentucky that, I guess, taxidermists who do this kind of thing? Um, yeah, there are taxidermists all, all throughout the state um, that do it. and. Uh, obviously, beavers are found across the state, or right. river otters, right. um, all types. Of I didn't realize just how soft the fur is. It's very soft, Very, yeah. very, very, very soft. Yes. Okay, so once we've caught our game, and we have our license, and we've done it safely, we don't take them back whole, mm -hmm. home. So what do you do? How do you do it safely and properly and respectfully? Mm -hmm. Well, with a deer, you, you field dress it, uh, to, for starters. And then you can either take it to a processor or quarter the animal yourself. If you quarter the animal yourself, if, if we're talking about deer, you right. have, there are certain parts of the animal that you have to keep attached to the animal oh. uh, for identification purposes after you've logged in on your harvest log and t uh, checked in on a telecheck. Um, after that, you know, you know it's, it's yours and you can take it home and do it yourself. Right. Um, you can do it in the field. 
if you're on a friend's farm, um, just ask them what their preference is. Uh, that would be the courteous thing to do. Because you said it's kind of like paying it forward for other animals out there too. Right? Sure. I mean, the, the, a carcass and, um, can attract uh, scavengers like coyotes, bobcats, eagles. Um, you know, something you know interesting to do would be to put a trail camera up huh. um, by the carcass and see what utilizes um, the carcass and, and you know what visits it. You know, you'd be surprised. Right. Okay, so you said something about identification. So are these animals tagged or, I mean, how do you, or you're just saying to, what species? To uh, determine whether male or female. Right. Um, that's, a, that's a rule um, for deer and I believe elk. Okay. So you have to keep the uh, parts of the animals intact. Okay. Okay. Sounds, sounds very, very interesting. But now, what is this big yellow jacket thing here? This is a, a archery target. So, okay. Um, they come in all, all sizes. Oh, uh, so it's not the big bullseye thing. It, well, it'll, you, it you could, know, you, be. It could okay. be the big bullseye. Okay. Um, and obviously, you shoot your arrows into it okay. um, to uh, sight in your bow or your crossbow. Ooh. Crossbows are very popular and gaining in popularity. Right. Um, so you would use something like this to make sure that you are accurate before you go out in the field because we always want to be accurate and that goes for rifles too. Oh, sure. Um, oh, sure. You know, one thing we recommend before the season is to go ahead and sight in your rifle to make sure you... What's that? When uh, you have a scope on a rifle, uh -huh. you want to make sure that where you're looking is where that gun is going to shoot. Oh. So you want to go ahead and do that before the season to make sure uh, your rifle is sighted in and it's in proper working order. Is there an age limit on this? Because we sure don't want children out there in harm's way and not knowing how to properly use use these. Sure, it's 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 kind of at the discretion of you know the parent yeah. or the guardian. Um, we do offer youth licenses, oh. um, youth permits uh, for youth hunters. Right. So do uh, they have to go through the same classes as the adult? They do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fees for these. Um, I've got they a, range in price. They range in price. Okay. Um, the, your best bet. Uh, we have a whole table in the um, in the hunting guide, also on our website fw.ky.gov. Okay. All right. And hunting, of course, is nothing that is brand spanking new. That's been something that's been around since time and immemorial. Sure. Hasn't it? And it's, you know, the the fall is so great around here, as you know. Yeah. The leaves changing. It's just a great time to be outdoors and. It's a good time to spend time outdoors with your family sure. um, and, and get your kids involved, get your wife, you know, get your siblings, anything right. like that. It's just a nice time to be outdoors and it's my favorite time of the year. But now isn't there um, a, a disease, it's this deer disease that is showing up that uh, everybody is concerned about mm -hmm. and uh, it's called EHD. Correct. Any uh, way to know if it's prevalent if, or, or if there is a deep concern here in Kentucky for that right now? Well, um, our website contains information about EHD and okay. this year's outbreak. This year's outbreak seems mainly concentrated in the southeast portion of the state. Okay. Um, working to our advantage is a hard freeze will kill the, the midges that transmit this disease to deer. Okay. So once we have a hard freeze, the concern starts to, starts to fade away and we should stop seeing fewer and fewer, or we should see fewer and fewer sick deer on the landscape right now. But this is something that happens every year. Uh, this is a little larger outbreak than we usually see. Right. Um, so the, the deer herd has shown its ability to bounce back even after being affected by this disease. By this disease. But we also talk about Lyme disease and ticks and things of mm -hmm. that nature. And so my friends from uh, Green Goo here have a little first aid kit, but DEET, I guess, and DEET products of any kind would mm -hmm. be a good thing for hunters, wouldn't it? Correct. Um, whenever I go out, I, have, I either have uh, bug spray, I have a first aid kit with me. Um, another good product is uh, permethrin. Okay. And that is a product that you spray on your clothes before you go into the field. You don't spray it on your body. Ah. Um, and that repels ticks um, and mosquitoes. There are also other devices out there called thermocells that um, uh, you kind of carry them on your body and uh, they repel um, mosquitoes and such. Oh, sort of like those little strips that you can kind of, mm -hmm. um, and citronella candles and things like Correct. that, you, yeah. but just on the body. Yes. Okay, what about, suppose I go out there and I have an accident. Who do I call? Do I call 911? Do I call you guys? What, what do I do? Well, if you have cell service. Yeah, <laughs> that's the big one. That's what I was thinking. And that's, you know, that's a major concern when you go out, especially if you're alone. Right. Um, if you've been out to the area before, 
uh, you will, you know, make sure you check your cell phone to see if there's a cell signal out there. Okay. Um, but it's always a good idea to go out, before you go out, let a loved one or a friend know where you're going to go and what time to expect you home. Mm -hmm. um, that's, all, you know, that's a great way to ensure that somebody knows where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, if they, you don't return home, they can send somebody to look for you. Right. Um, but always carry, you know, a first aid kit, you know, just anything, you know, a whistle is really good because if you fall uh, in the you woods, can you can blow the whistle. Sure. Um, so just always think, think ahead like that, you know, don't get caught off guard or try not to get a caught off guard out in the woods. So you got to pre-plan, pre-plan, right? Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, Matador um, is another company that I, I contacted in to help us out with some show and tell items. And so they have uh, blankets for you that mm -hmm. can fold down and they have this little waterproof bag because you do need to take things with you mm -hmm. like hydration right absolutely you definitely want to be hydrated and, you know you want to have um, some sort of snack like a granola bar or a little pouch of almonds or I always take almonds and a granola bar and, right. a, and a jug of water with me if, right. if I'm just going out for the you know in the morning or the afternoon. And you don't want to be carrying it here in your hand because you want to be ready so yeah, get so it for your back. A right? backpack and, and the lighter you can go something small like, like that, that is, is kind of know, works preferable. Yeah. All right well now let's talk a little bit about um, how this has helped our economy because it's not just us here in Kentucky mm -hmm. who are are out there doing this. A lot of people come from other states and even other mm -hmm. countries to, to game hunt here, right? Absolutely. Kentucky is a, de is a destination state for hunters. Um, I read something before I came here today yeah. that, that in, in the course of a year we have 3.4 million people who, either, who come to Kentucky or enjoy hunting, boating, fishing, or other wildlife related activities, wow. activities and that translates into about a six billion dollar economic impact. You're kidding. So this is significant. I mean a lot of people like to do this and Kentucky offers so much to people. We like to say at the department that we're living in the good old days because we truly are because we have you know, we've had we've restored the elk herd. This is the 20th anniversary of the restoration of a free uh, ranging elk herd in oh, East wow. Kentucky. Uh, turkeys, deer, they used to be few and far between in the state. Right. Um, so, and bears, you know, you're seeing the return of bears in East Kentucky. Yeah. So, it's, uh, it's a tremendous place to visit, it's a beautiful place to visit, and one of the things I enjoy about Kentucky is just the, the, the difference from one end of the state to the other. You know, it's just, uh, you get a little bit of everything here. Well, let's talk about it, since we're getting towards the season for turkeys, mm. wild turkeys, a lot mm. of people like to hunt them, right? Sure, absolutely. Spring is um, spring is by far the most popular time to hunt them. That's, we have a spring season, but we also have a fall season. Right. Um, the fall season um, it can be fun to hunt as well and very, uh, very productive. But now I, I know I've driven along the interstate and sometimes I'll look out the window and there's something there, yeah. <laughs> you know. You can't just stop and pull out your bow and arrow or whatever and take care of... No. <laughs> take care of dinner right there. No, you know? it would be nice, but right. no. Right. Um, you want to go to a wildlife management area or a farm or some place where uh, you're allowed to do that. No, I'm talking about being on the interstate. Sometimes we sadly see when a vehicle has mm -hmm. met up with an animal. Most of the time it's deer. What are kind of the rules with that? Uh, you know, if you are the one who hits it, is there something you're supposed to do? Can you harvest it there? Or is it just safer to just call somebody else to, to come and get it and leave it alone? Well, you certainly, we're entering the time where there are, you know, more uh, vehicle collisions with deer, but right. um, you certainly want to make sure, you know, if you happen to hit a deer, be, you know, make sure you're okay, pull over the sure. side of the road. Because that's uh, like hitting a brick wall, isn't it? It can be, yeah, it yeah. can cause damage, yeah. um, a lot of damage. Yeah. Um, but if you see a, a deer that's been hit on the side and it's laying on the side of the road, just leave it. Okay. Um, you know, that's the best thing to do. Somebody will come around and do. Do we call it. state police if we see it, or do we call you guys, or, or usually, we just usually, we just rely on on folks just patrolling and. Stuff. Yes, I think that's the that's right safer way yeah. to do it. Okay, all right. And uh, we were talking too about once we've gotten our kill and and we want to prepare it. Do you guys have recipes or anything of of best ways to serve venison or to cook it or pre or or prepare it? Well, we do. Um, one of my jobs at the department, I'm a staff writer for Kentucky Field Magazine. It uh -huh. comes out four times a year, but we do have a cooking column mm -hmm. in the magazine each uh, each issue. Um, you can find some recipes um, on the website, 
But uh, the beautiful thing about the web is, I mean, you can you can find just about anything you want now exactly. on, when you want to prepare, uh, um, you know, game meat. Could we um, actually put it on like a grill? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. This is so, stuff that you can kind of grill, and yeah. and so I found another little product that people, if they're wanting to do it, but you said that a lot of your uh, areas are not campground specific, right? Correct. So. If you want to see if an area is if allows camping, the bet your best bet would be to call our department or that the number listed in the hunting guide mm -hmm. for that area and see if camping's allowed. But now, if we're out fishing, we could probably easily do that, right? Well, um, it depends. Okay. Yeah, I, I think uh, a short lunch is something that everybody enjoys for mm -hmm. sure. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Now, what about the licensing for fishing? Mm -hmm. Kids don't need a license, do they? They do. Okay. Um, I th believe it's 15 and older. Okay. Um, uh, require a fishing license. And okay. Like, so, uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, f there are fewer, I guess there are fewer fishing licenses and options than there are hunting. Sure. Uh, um, but if you're gonna, going to um, uh, catch and intend to keep trout, you right. also need a trout permit. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So if you catch trout, you have to catch and release? Uh, oh, if you don't have the license? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, one of our programs is the Fishing in Neighborhoods program. Oh, what's and that? And it's, uh, it's, we call it, say it's good fishing close to home, but it's uh, close to urban settings. Okay. Um, so there are two, two locations here in Fayette County, Jacobson Park and the Horse Park. Okay. And the Finns Lakes get stocked several times a year. Okay. Um, and coming up later this month and or the beginning of next month, it just depends on the timing, they'll be stocked with rainbow trout. Oh, wow. So you can go out there and catch you know, your rainbow trout and take it home and eat it. And I, I think trout are delicious. So. Indeed. Or as I was saying, the uh, folks from Cameron's, they have a little portable grill so people can, if they're out camping, they can catch their fish if mm -hmm. they're in a spot, a location they can do sure. it and, and cook it right there. And of course, have a little tailgate if, if you're doing tailgating to, to keep things nice and cool. Absolutely. Are you a hunter or a fisherman? Uh, I'm, I grew up fishing. Um, I, I've only picked up hunting within the last few years. What do I, you like about it? I, um, well, I enjoy being outside, outdoors. Right. And um, uh, it's not about what I catch or what I harvest in the field. It's um, mainly about the experience and, you yeah. know, with, as, a, as a father and, you know, we all have busy lives and mm -hmm. just getting away from it all. That's, um, uh, it's really nice to do from time to time. And, uh, um, you know, it's nice to have a hobby like that that gets you into beautiful spots. My grandfather, he is uh, deceased now, but he could fish all day long, mm -hmm. especially when he was retired. And the thing is, he used to love to, um, I guess, gut and prepare all of, I mean, even if it was like this big, mm -hmm. he was still very, very proud of it. So that was... It's something to be proud of. Yeah. I mean, it's an accomplishment. Oh, sure. You know, it's, you know, uh, you know catching, catching your own meal is, uh, you know, Predates us for sure. Oh sure, um, oh sure. But um, you know, g game meat, um, you know, fish—it's a great source of protein, and it's uh, you know, it's organic, it's free range, right? It's, you know, it's everything that that people want nowadays. Indeed, indeed, and you're doing it more economically than if you have to let somebody else do it and buy it in the store. Sure. Absolutely. What's the shelf life for it? Stuff that you catch yourself. Uh, well, it depends. I usually, uh, me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, if, I, if I know I'm not going to eat, um, you know, if I fillet a fish, um, if I'm not going to eat it within a few days, right. I'll go ahead and freeze it. Okay. Um, one neat trick that uh, um, somebody taught me years ago with fish fillets is uh, you take a freezer bag right. and you put your fillets in there and then you fill it with water and put a little bit of salt in it and it preserves the fillet and uh, when it thaws. Um, it'll, be, uh, it'll be just like you put it in. You're kidding. Yeah, it's a great method. Well, there you go. Yep. You look at a digital conversation, you get a little <laughs> trick there. Kevin, it's so good to see you, and it's always good to see you guys out there. Thanks so much for watching this LEX18 Digital Conversation. Be sure to follow us on LEX18.com for more digital conversations. Until next time, I'm Dia Davidson.